God for how you blessed us, how you have just shown yourself faithful. God, we thank you for that, God. God, thank you for being our keeper, our preserver, our protector, our provider, for being our God. We thank you. And God, we do pray, God, that you are you this moment, God, to glorify that name. God, pray that you are you this moment to draw us closer to you, oh God. God, we say, God, that you have the right of way, God. Have thy way in this place. Speak to your people, oh God. Give us direction, God, as I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I do give honor to God, the Father, to God, the Son, to God, the Holy Ghost, and to all of you that are here in your respective place, as well as to those that will be a part of our virtual community as well. But it's good to be here. Amen. 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 But it's even better to be on the Lord's side. Yeah. For when everything is going on around us, it is important that we have something constant in our lives. Right. And that constant should be the presence of the Lord. Amen. That constant should also be prayer. Yeah. That constant should also be the Word of God. Yeah. And so this morning we're going to ask that you would turn with me to the book of St. Luke chapter number 7. St. Luke chapter number 7. You get that say amen. Amen. Luke chapter number 7. Chapter 7. We're not going to be able to finish this today because, really, as I was reading and just studying things out and just seeing things, there's just so much in here to unpack, and we just can't unpack it in one setting. So, we all want to just share this portion and let the Spirit of God govern us throughout the remainder. Luke chapter number 7. Verse number one says, Now we had entered, excuse me, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum or Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was ill unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus talking about the centurion, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that the centurion was worthy for whom he should do this. For the centurion, he loves our nation. He built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, trouble not yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter it under my roof. Wherefore, neither did I think myself worthy to come to you, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I am also a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say to one, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, turned about, and said to the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent returned to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. You may be seated. I want to go back to number two and down to number I want to just pull these two out real quick. And a certain centurion's servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. Verse 3. 
And when the centurion heard of Jesus, he sent to him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Now verse number eight says, for I'm also a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say to one, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. Mm -hmm. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Brothers and sisters, I just want to look at this for a few moments, and we're just going to share some things from the sacred text. And I want to start off, as we look at this, I want us to grasp that the setting of this text is in the town of Capernaum, according to verse number one. Now, Capernaum is significant because Capernaum is a place where Jesus did a lot of miraculous works. All right. A lot of miracles were done in the town of the city of Capernaum or Capernaum. Uh -huh. Brothers and sisters, even if you were to, in your own spare time, just look at Mark chapter number one, you will see even in Mark chapter number one that he cast the devil out of a man that was in the synagogue at Capernaum. And if you flip over to Mark chapter number two, you will see that he healed a man that was sick of the palsy, also in the city of the town of Capernaum. Now, I do want to pause for a second before we go any further. Again, he did a lot of miraculous works in the town or city of Capernaum. Amen. And again, as we just showed to you, I just shared with you, and one of the things that he did do was cast the devil out of a man that was in the synagogue at Capernaum. And what I do want you to understand is, you know, that the synagogue was a meeting place where they would come there and they would hear the word of God. Amen. It was a meeting place where they would come and listen as the uh, facilitator or whosoever was in charge that day would actually teach the word of God to the listeners. But while they were there on that particular day, there was a man in the synagogue sitting in the place where the word was going forth, and there was a man sitting there who had a devil on the inside of him. Amen. Now, the significance of that is, please understand, not everyone that comes to hear the word of God is filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It is indeed a truth that there are even people that come in our assembly that are also filled or possessed with the devil. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, everyone that comes in the house of God is filled with the Holy Ghost, right. filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There are truly a person or some people that are actually in the assembly, <coughs> hearing the word of God, and yet are possessed with a devil. Amen. And can I tell you something? The devil is real. Amen. That's why the stuff that we see that's going on outside of us, that's going on around of us, going around us, again, it is, again, it is, it is perpetuated by a real devil. Amen. Don't get it twisted. It's not just people going through phases in life. Well. It's not just people that just have a hard hard time or people just had a, 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 a hard time growing up. The reality of it is that is a devil on the loose. Amen. And that's why the world is in the condition that it's in because that is a devil on the loose. Amen. And again, in Mark chapter number one, as Jesus was in Capernaum, even at the synagogue, he had to cast the devil out of a man that was in the synagogue as the word was going forth. Are right. y'all listening to me then? Yeah. Don't you know that not only are people possessed that come into the house of God, but sometimes the devil not only will sit in you, but sometimes he will sit on you. Are y'all listening to me here? That, that, that's why sometimes when the Spirit of God is moving, it is, he is, it is evident that he's moving in the house, and yet you are sitting there as though you are restricted from receiving him. A lot of times it's because there's something sitting either on your shoulders or sitting in your lap. And until you learn how to shake him off, until you learn how to take authority over the devil, you will miss out on your moment with the Lord. Because there are times when 
God wants to do something in the sanctuary, not just in the sanctuary in general, but sometimes he wants to do something in you or for you while you are here, but sometimes you can't receive it because you got the devil sitting in your lap. And until you make up in your mind that, look, I didn't come here just to come, but I came to receive something, so devil, you have no place in my life. At some point, you want to, to, to receive all that God is willing to give. Are oh, y'all hearing me in here? Amen. Again, he cast the devil out of a man that was in the synagogue in Capernaum. Again, you will find that in Mark chapter 1. Now, in Mark chapter 2, again, as we just said, shared with you again, it was there when he was in Capernaum. Remember, there was a man that was carried by four people. Because Jesus was on the inside of the house. But because there were so many people inside the house, the people, the men, couldn't get to Jesus through the door. But because of their compassion and concern for the man, they're like, look, we're not just going to drop them off by the door. We're going to find a way to get them to Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So what they did was they climbed to the top of the house. They broke open the roof and they let the man down to the roof and put him in the presence of the Lord. Can I tell you something? The question is, how much does your loved ones mean to you? The one you've been praying for, how much do they mean? I love you too much for you to stay bound by the enemy. I love you too much for you to act the way that you are acting. I love you too much for you to not become the man or the woman that God wants you to be. Please understand, at some point, you got to have the love of God on the inside of you. Because he is the love of God that will push you to get people yes. to the Lord. Amen. Y'all hear me in here? Amen. That story just does something to me. Because when I think about it, when they saw the ground, when they could not get in through the door, Jesus. they could have just left that man at the door and said, at least we tried. It could have went on about their business. But because they uh, were really concerned about the man, right, yeah. and because they wanted to see the man heal, and right. wanted to see the man whole, they found a way to get him to the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Too often, we just ignore other people's conditions. Yes, Too often, we just walk past people and leave them stuck even when we can do something about it. Right. I do understand that there are some things that we cannot help. But at least let's give it a try. Right. Because even if we can't do it, there is a God that can. So sisters, when I think about how much they care about the man, again, I think about it now, they could have just dropped him off at the door Amen. and left him there. But they really wanted to see the man whole. Do you want to see people whole? Amen. Or are you like some people, you celebrate, celebrate people's brokenness? Then there are some people that are happy when other folk are broken. Then there are people that get a kick out of other people's pain. Then there are other people, there are some people that would rather see people stuck in where they are than rather than seeing them get loose. Amen. 
And there are some people that don't want people to go no further than they have with themselves. But a true Christian understands, look, whatever I can do to help get you to where you're supposed to be, I'm going to do my part. That, that, that's the love of God on the inside. Amen. Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do. He, he didn't say, look, I, I've, done, I, I've done all this and you can't do no more than me. Jesus said again, greater work, I want you to do more than I need. Go further than I went. Reach more than I reached. Right. Sisters, again, that episode took place in Capernaum. Matter of fact, in John chapter 4, it is also in Capernaum that a nobleman's son, who was at the point of death, also got healed by the Lord. Y'all remember that story when, again, some, someone sent, uh, again, they sent some people to uh, the Lord, and, 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 and on one day, and, and the Lord had healed the man uh, and, and right there on the spot, but it wasn't until the next day that when they got back to the house, again, they saw the young man that he was healed and he was whole, and they asked, what did it take place? So he was healed yesterday. And they realized that the moment he was healed, at the same time that the Lord had already spoken the word of his healing. So can I tell you something? His word can meet you right where you are. Are y'all hearing me in here? His word can meet you right where you are. Time can't stop his word from getting to you. Space can't stop his word from getting to you. Sickness can't stop his word from getting to you. The prison cell can't stop his word from getting to you. The hospital room can't stop his word from getting to you. Can I tell you something? His word can get to you, whatever you are. That's why the Bible says he sent his word and he healed it. His word. His word can find you. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. His word can find you. That's why I'm in your seat today, because his word found you. And that's why you're here today, because his word found you. That's when you were down deep in sin, his word found you. When people can recognize you or who you were, it was his word that found you. It was his word that found you right where you were. His word. Send his word. Those kids of yours that are in college, send a word to them. Those kids of yours that are out of town, send a word to them. That husband and that wife on that job in another area, send a word to them. That sister, brother, y'all that is far from the church, send a word to them. There is no space or no time that the word can reach a person. Send a word. Send a word. Send the word. Hallelujah. Send the word to him. Hallelujah. Send the word to him. Good God Almighty. Send the word to the armies. Send the word to him. Good God Almighty. Send the word. Send the word to Send the word. Send the word. I said he sent his word. And he healed them. The word can reach him. I don't care what they are, the word can reach him. That child you ain't heard from, the word can reach him. Y'all ain't hear me in here. The word can reach that brother or sister that it was taught right, but the living contrary to how they were raised, the word can reach him. Word. I'll tell you something. The word still works. How many of y'all know that? How many of y'all believe that? The word still works. Let me say that again. The word still works. Let me say it one more time. The word of God still works. <laughs> the word still works. Lord, thank you for your word. Brothers and sisters, again, these are just some of the things that took place in the town of city of Capernaum. Now, I do want to tell you that Jesus did so many miraculous works in Capernaum 
that he even put Capernaum in check because of Capernaum's failure to submit to the will of God. If you take a moment and go to Matthew chapter 11 and verse 23, you will read what it says, and you, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, you shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in you had been done in Sodom, then Sodom would have remained until this day. In other words, brothers and sisters, as much as the Lord had done in Capernaum, Capernaum should have been a model city of how people should have responded to the grace of God. Amen. Capernaum should have been a standard of gratitude. Should have been a standard of humility. Should have been a standard of service. However, because of its pride and arrogance, Capernaum as a whole was no better than the city of Sodom. Wow. Wow. The same city that God had burned with fire. Can I tell you some brothers and sisters? When you think about St. Philip Baptist Church, uh -huh. when you think about all that God has done for St. Philip for years, hey, hey, hey. some of y'all were here before I got here. Matter of fact, a lot of y'all were here before I got here. Think about how good the Lord has been to St. Philip. Amen. The time when St. Philip should have closed his doors. Uh -huh. But look at what the Lord has done. Amen. Think about all the people that have got saved through St. Philip. Amen. All the people that have got baptized through St. Philip. Amen. Think about all the people who have found their purpose through St. Philip. Uh -huh. Think about how many ways and all the time God has blessed people individually in St. Philip and through St. Philip. St. Philip should be a model of gratitude. Should be a model of humility. Should be a model of service. Can I tell you the Lord has been good to St. Philip? Y'all ain't hearing me here. The Lord has been good to St. Philip. The reason why St. Philip has made it this far is that the Lord has been good to St. Philip. So St. Philip should be the model of humility. The model of gratitude. The model Some people, uh -huh. 
as much as some people experience his grace, whether through healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, etc., instead of those same people being humble, being grateful, being inclined to change for the better, these same people become more arrogant, more prideful, more insubordinate, and more selfish. It's as though to them, their blessings are only a result of chance, of luck, or of fate. As opposed to mercy, grace, and love. Let's be honest about this thing. So many of y'all right now still believe in luck. Talk to me, somebody. How many of y'all believe in luck? Put your head high in the air. Oh, no, 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 no. There's no such thing as love. Are y'all hearing me here? I don't care how many folding clothes you have, how many rabbit foots or feet you have. Are y'all hearing me here? Some of y'all have allowed the world to use things and and, and, and give y'all ideologies that have taken the place of the word of God. Amen. Some of y'all have a mentality if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. Talk to me, somebody. All the good luck for put, people put their hand in there. Oh, I've heard y'all talk about luck. I, I, I can call some of y'all luck. I've heard y'all, I've heard some of y'all say, I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow, here will be no bad luck. No bad luck. Talk to me, somebody. Talk, talk to me now. Amen. All y'all that believe in luck, put your head high there. Be honest with me. Oh, now y'all gonna be honest. I got to step on you here, be honest with me. Let me tell y'all something. If luck was real, there's an old saying, luck runs out. So to you that believe in luck, what you gonna do when your luck run out? Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. That, that's why I don't believe in luck, I believe in grace. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me here? Yeah. Watch this. Grace is sufficient. Grace is abounding. Hallelujah. To God Almighty. Grace does not run out. Hallelujah. To God Almighty. That's why I don't depend on luck. I depend on grace. But well, some of y'all bubble right now. Some, some of y'all need to be strange. But Pastor, does that mean I gotta stop scouring my yard for four leaf clovers? Yes, you do. <laughs> Pastor, does that mean I gotta throw away my rabbit foot keychain? Yes, it does. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, that, there you go. So, brothers and sisters, what does this stuff come from? So, so we began to believe this stuff, and what it does is it takes the place of faith. That's right. That, that's what the devil does. He uses these things to take the place of faith. Yes. So, so what we do is we, we, we think everything is revolved, revolved around luck and fate. Mm. F-A-T-E. So that you have to understand, God is a real God. Yes, he has a way of doing things in his own way, yes. his own time, uh -huh. but God always looks out for our way to do. Yes, Brothers and sisters, there is no thing, no luck. It's all about mercy and grace. Amen. It's about God's timing. It's about God's will. Amen. But what happens is, again, People again, instead of being humble, grateful, and inclined to change for the better, again, they become more arrogant, prideful, support, insubordinate, and selfish. And again, they think that their blessings are only a result of chance, luck, or fate. Amen. They denounce mercy, grace, and love. And gravitate towards chance, luck, and fate. Well, 
And they don't realize that the enemy is using that to take away their faith in the Lord. Amen. Why pray to God when you believe in luck and faith? Why trust God when you believe that there's a thing called luck and faith? Well, if it's going to be a luck or a faith thing, then what's the purpose of prayer? Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. 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 That's my idea. It's the devil. He subtly inserts things into our lives, into our minds, into our, into our mentality. He, he, he subtly inserts things and makes them sound so good. That's right. And he uses those things to draw us further and further away from the Lord. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, these same people, instead of them acknowledging the Lord, they proclaim themselves to be self-made. How many of y'all have heard of self-made people before? They call themselves self-made. I'm a self-made millionaire. I'm a self-made this, I'm a self-made that. Talk to me, somebody. Brothers and sisters, they, they, they proclaim themselves to be self-made, and therefore they are living as they please in regardless to the word and will of God. And they don't realize the destruction they are setting themselves up for. The Bible said that is a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof leads to death or destruction. That's in the Bible. Proverbs. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Yes, it is a fact. The Lord wants us to use our minds. He wants us to use our talents. He wants us to use our abilities. But we must not forget that it is he that enables us to use our mind in the first place. It's him that enables our mind to function. Are y'all hearing me here? Amen. It is the Lord that enables our minds to function. Right. Because you have to think about it, what good is it having ability and talent when your mind can't function? Talk to me, somebody. Amen. But what good is it to be so talented, to, to have so many abilities, and yet to use them because your mind is gone? Amen. Are y'all hearing me here? Yeah. When your mind is gone, what can you do? It is he that enables our minds to function. It is he that gives us the functionality to express and use our talents and our abilities. As a matter of fact, it is he that created us in the first place. Amen. Amen. And as Jesus said to his disciples in John 15 and 5, that without him, we can do nothing. Are y'all hearing me here? Brothers and sisters, hear me clear. As God blesses you, stay humble. As God blesses you, stay teachable. Are y'all hearing me? As God blesses you, stay grateful. As God blesses you, stay on the Lord's side. Matter of fact, I've shared this with you before. I remember Dr. Cook. Dr. Fred Cook shared this with us back in McCormick some years ago, that acronym, in life, just remain fat. Faithful, available, and teachable. Faithful, available, teachable. However God blesses you, remain faithful, available, teachable. It's a neighbor. Stay fat. Amen. <laughs> now I need you to go back and say faithful, faithful available, available, teachable. Teachable. I don't want them to get that confused. <laughs> because all of us, or most of us rather, need to lose some weight. All right. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. So I don't mean for you to stay fat as far as obesity is concerned, but rather stay fat as far as being faithful, available, and teachable. 
And if you are already faithful, available, and teachable, God bless you. Matter of fact, all the faithful, available, and teachable folk, put your hand in the air real quick. So you are my fat people. Well, I'm glad to have some fat people in this church. Stay fat. It's important. The fatter you stay, or the more you stay fat, the more the Lord can bless you. And the more he can use you. The more he can use you. Matter of fact, the more he can use you in ways he may not be able to use somebody else because of their pride and the arrogance. But again, stay, stay home. Think about it. You don't always have what you have now. Amen. Amen. Y'all hear me here? Amen. You, you are not always what you are, right? Stay home. Amen. We was talking yesterday and after the funeral and just talking about some stuff and whatnot and, you know, makes me think about just the way I was raised. I'm so thankful that God allowed my mother to raise me the way he raised me. Amen. Because it helped me to stay humble. Yeah. See, I didn't have a whole lot, but I had what I needed. All right. Amen. And that's why now when I'm going to have what the next person has, I'm still okay. Because I know how to manage with what I do have. I don't have to be like somebody else to be special. I don't have to look like somebody else to look good. Yeah. Are you hearing me in here? Yeah. How about when you are raised in humility, yeah. it helps you to remain in humility. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me in here? Yeah. I thank God for that. I thank the Lord for that. Being humble is a great thing. It's not a bad thing. Being humble doesn't mean that you're weak. It means that you're wise. God can bless you more when you're humble. He really can. Humble thyself under the mighty hand of God, and He will lift you up in new season. Brothers and sisters, stay humble. Some of y'all, see, that's the thing about it. Some of you give your kids too much, they don't work for anything, they don't earn anything. And that's why they are either lazy now or ungrateful or unteachable. Because they don't earn anything. At some point they need to learn how to earn some stuff. Teach them humility. Because when they learn how to earn something, they learn how to value something. Are y'all hearing me here? See, one of the reasons why some of you value what you value is because you have to earn your way to get it. It costs you something. When it costs you something, it places more value in your eyes. Y'all hear me here? Amen. You have to earn some things. God doesn't just put everything in our hand. He don't just drop everything in our laps. Are y'all hear me here? I know y'all don't want to hear that because all some of y'all want to hear is that power of sky blessing is a turn around. But look at how good you turned out. To talk to somebody. It's going to happen in the next show. That's why they're as bad as they are right now. So you try to give them stuff that wasn't given to you. Stuff you had to earn. Talk to me, somebody. Bad behind kids. They ain't mischievous. Some of them just bad.
press forward and get out y'all way this morning. I'm just wrong with y'all. <laughs> now, as he's at Capernaum, on this particular occasion, he is encountered by a situation concerning a centurion and his servant. The text says, a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. That's right. And when the centurion heard of Jesus, he sent Jewish elders to Jesus, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Amen. Now, before we proceed, it's important to note that the centurion was a Roman soldier. That's right. Meaning he was a Gentile. Uh -huh. He was of Roman descent. Meaning he was not raised under the principles of the law of Moses. Right. As a matter of fact, being a Roman meant that he was introduced to many other beliefs and doctrines. Amen. Many that were contrary to the law of Moses. But yet there was something different about this centurion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This centurion had a heart of compassion. Yeah. Matter of fact, he was concerned about the health of his servant. Now keep in mind now that the centurion was a captain over 100 soldiers. Meaning then, he had statue, he had authority, he had influence. Therefore, he could have just as well replaced his sick servant with somebody else. But because of the service that his servant had provided, and because of the compassion that the centurion had, he wanted to do all that he could to see his servant well. Amen. Brother, sister, we Paul to say this. Everybody is replaceable. Amen. 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 How many of y'all know that? Everybody is replaceable. Uh -huh. I'm replaceable. Uh -huh. You can get another pastor. Amen. I'm replaceable. She can get another husband. Amen. I'm replaceable. Don't care who you are, we are all replaceable. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. You are replaceable on your job. Amen. Are y'all here to hear? See, some of y'all think that you are not replaceable. Amen. Can I tell y'all something? All of you are, all of us, are replaceable. Amen. Let me say that one more time. I know some of y'all really do feel that nobody can take your place. Can I tell you something? You are replaceable. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. You are replaceable. Amen. On your job, uh -huh. you are replaceable. Right. With your position in the church, uh -huh. you are replaceable. Amen. Even with your position at your house, you are replaceable. Amen. Talk to me somehow, y'all quiet now. Amen. You die, your spouse ain't gonna be single always. <laughs> to talk to me somebody, I let that choose to. Amen. To talk to me somebody. Amen. Oh, y'all don't wanna hear that. Amen. Anybody wanna sleep in my bed, how you gonna know? <laughs> Your same hairpiece, your same suit, your same tie. Talk to me, somebody. 
you're not replaceable. Everybody is replaceable. Talk to me, somebody. When they've had enough to hear, you can't be replaced. Or y'all quiet on I did. I, I tried. Try. Try. Try to tell me how it works out. To talk to me somebody, just try. And then come back and tell me how it works out. Well, now, don't you know I saw somebody else in my house? I told you you replaced me. Talk to me somebody. Driving your car, the car you paid for. Talk to me somebody. You better watch how you treat them. You think, Lord, no, people have been talented. Don't nobody want them but me. Why do people think that? It's replaceable. Whether in the house, on the job, in the church, in the community, in the White House, everybody is replaceable. Are y'all hearing me? Now, that may not be able to ever be another you, but somebody can take your space. Are y'all hearing me here? Nobody can be you, but they can take your space. Are y'all hearing me here? You will never have another you in this life. But somebody can take your space. Always keep that in mind. But when you provide good service, when you are humble and honorable, nobody wants to replace you. Are y'all hearing me? Again, everybody is replaceable. But whenever you provide good service, when you are humble and honorable, nobody wants to replace you. When your attitude and your abilities are on the same page, when they're in a good place, nobody wants to replace you. Are y'all hearing me here? And that's what we are in the text. The servant, remember if you go back down to verse number 8, he said, and my servant, when I tell him to do this, he does it. That's what he said in verse number 8. Whenever I tell my servant to do something, he does it. So he has a humble servant, an honorable servant. He has a faithful servant. And because of the quality of the servant that he has, and the quality of the servant that he provides, and because of the compassion in his interior's heart, he's at a place where now he began to intercede on behalf of his servant. Because the text says what he did, he hears about the Lord. Uh -huh. Watch this, when he heard of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me pause for a second. Again, here you have a centurion. Again, Roman, been introduced to so many beliefs and doctrines, and yet still has a heart of compassion. Yes. What that means, brothers and sisters, there are people out there that may not believe identically what you believe, right. but their heart is in the right place. Amen. There are some people out there that will do more for you than some people in here will. Amen. There are some people out there who really do have hearts of compassion. Amen. Are y'all hearing me here? Amen. That's why it's important that we know how to treat people. Yeah, that's right. Because here you have a Roman soldier, a centurion, has a heart of compassion. Yes, sir. A heart of compassion. Yes, sir. A heart of compassion. And the text says when he hears about Jesus, when he hears about Jesus, what does this mean? That means, brothers and sisters, again, it's important for us as Christians yes. to be witnesses of who the Lord is, to, 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 to share his word, to, to share our testimony.
testimonies. Because somebody needs to hear not only that he's real, but somebody needs to hear what he's done for us. There's somebody out there that doesn't believe but need a reason to believe. There's somebody that needs to hear that, that if the Lord did it for them, he can do it for me. Here you have the centurion, the text said, when he heard of Jesus. Watch this. He never met Jesus himself. Never had been in the presence of Jesus. But when he heard of Jesus, heard about what the Lord had done, he sent Jewish elders unto the Lord on behalf of his servant. Brothers and sisters, they are evil in the streets. There are people in the clubs. There are people, again, that are in the community. There are people out there that need to hear about the Lord. Amen. They need to know that the Lord is real. Amen. They need to know that the Lord is very much alive, that he cares, that he's able. They need to see him. They need to hear about him. And they're going to do that through us. As believers, as disciples, yeah. that's why it is imperative that we let our light shine. Amen. Because somebody out there needs to see the light. Yeah. Somebody out there needs hope. Somebody out there needs a reason to believe. Yeah. Yeah. So the text says he sends Jewish elders unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. On behalf of his servant. Listen to what it says. He sent unto Jesus elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. So again, you got two different elements of intercession. Number one, you have the centurion interceding on behalf of his servant. That's right. Then you have the elders of the Jews interceding on behalf of the centurion as well as the servant. So much intercession is going on. All of them trying to get to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Let me pause to say this. What I want you to see is this. You got a Roman soldier with a heart of compassion. That's right. He has a honorable, humble, faithful servant at home, sick, at his house, sick. He wants to see his servant well again. Amen. Some kind of way he had a relationship with the elders of the Jews. Well, Hear this now. The old people, they see the heart of the centurion. Uh -huh. The old people know that the centurion is something different about him. The centurion, he respects the elders of the Jews. Right. Can I tell y'all something? It's important not only to treat people in general, but can I tell you, it's important to respect your elders. Amen. It's important to respect your elders. Watch this now. I want you to see this in verse number four. And when they came to Jesus, these elders of the Jews, they besought Jesus instantly. They begged Jesus. They implored Jesus. They besought Jesus instantly said that he was worthy for whom he should do this. In other words, this centurion that needs you to come, this centurion is worthy enough. He's worthy enough for you to do this for him. This centurion, this Roman centurion, this Roman soldier, he got elderly Jews speaking on his behalf. It's important to respect the elders. Can I tell you something? When you have old people speaking on your behalf, that's a blessing right there. That's a blessing right there. When you have old people speaking on your behalf, that's a blessing right there. That's why I'm going to tell you, carry yourself the right way. Because whenever you can have the word of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a credible old person on your side. The word of a credible elderly person carries a lot of weight. Are y'all hearing me here? The word of a credible elderly person carries a lot of weight. 
The text says, they told Jesus, Lord, this Roman soldier, he's worthy of that. Well, my wife said that. Let me tell you what he did for us. Text says, for he loves our nation. Hold on, hold on. He loves our, he loves our people. Hold on, hold on. This Roman centurion, this Roman soldier, he loves the Jewish people. That is so out of order. That is so disconnected. But there was something different about this Roman soldier. It wasn't so much of his nationality, but it was the condition of his heart. There was something about his heart. There was something on the inside that made this Roman soldier different than the rest of him. Text said he loves our nation. And he has built, he has built us a synagogue. This Roman soldier has built us a place to come learn and worship. This Roman soldier has built us a place to come learn and worship. Our God, the same God, the God of life. Do you understand? Do you really understand the heart that this man had? Yes. Yes. A Roman? Hmm. That believes so much other stuff? has built the Jewish people a synagogue for them to come worship their God. Oh, really? yes. Now, not, not, not come worship the Roman God. That's right. That's right. Now, not come worship Mercury or Zeus or anybody else, but to come worship Jehovah. All right, this centurion, his heart is different. There was something different about this centurion. I'll pause right here. This centurion, his heart made him different. Not his title, not his position, but his heart. There was something about the condition of his heart that set him apart. Here you have this Roman soldier that's concerned about his servant. Uh -huh. He wants to see his servant well. So when he hears about Jesus, he intercedes on his servant's behalf. Amen. He sends old people that found him to be credible, sends them to tell Jesus to come and heal his servant. Amen. And the old folk get to Jesus and say to Jesus, Lord, this Roman soldier, he's credible. He, he, he's worthy or not Amen. for you to come do this for him. Because let me tell you what he did for us. Watch well, this now. What he did for our people in the same way he did for Jesus' people. <laughs> because Jesus was Jewish himself. So when it said, let me tell you what he did. He loved our name. He loved our people. He built up a synagogue. Jesus was also Jewish. All right. Look at what he did for our people, Lord. Yes, sir. He gave us a place to come learn, a place to come worship the one true God, but it's also your Father. Yes. He loves our people. He loves our people. He built us a synagogue. So much intercession going on right now. So much love in the atmosphere. Yes. The man. This Roman soldier was not power struck. All right. He was still compassionate. Had power and still compassionate. Yes. Had authority and still compassionate. Had influence and still compassionate. Yes. He was compassionate. Hallelujah. He was compassionate. Had a heart of love. The Bible says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Right. For thereby some of entertain angels unaware. There will be folk that don't look like you, but may have a heart better than you. There will be folk that may not have come where you came from, but their heart is in the right place. Maybe people that don't come to St. Philip, but their heart is in the right place. Maybe some people that really don't know who Jesus is, but their heart is in the right place. And they need to hear what you have to say. They need to see the light that you shine. They need to see him inside of you. So much intercession. So much intercession right now. 
So much intercession, Lord. The centurion on behalf of the servant. The elderly Jews on behalf of the centurion. Mm -hmm. Sisters, whenever you and I understand that we've been this together, well, so many great things can take place. Yes. 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 But we understand that we may not all have the same ability, may not all have the same gift. That's right. But we put our gifts together. Yes. We put our abilities together. Yes. Something good takes place. Yes. Everybody benefits. Yes. But we have to learn to work together. We have to learn how to see the good in each other. Well, For this elderly group of people, they saw the good in the centurion. Uh -huh. Sisters, so, 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 we have to learn how to see people from the inside out, yeah. not just the outside in. Uh -huh. yeah. Let's look at the heart. And can I tell you, the fruit will give us an indication of what's on the inside. Amen. He loves our nation. He loves our people. He built us a synagogue. We see the fruit which indicate the condition of his heart. Yeah. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we're going to do something a little different today. There are people going through right now, people that are real sick, some are at the point of death, that there are people that are going through whereas it's really taking a toll on their mind. That there are people dealing with stuff right now because their kids are just so disconnected from how they were taught. So disconnected from the church, so disconnected from the law. There are parents right now that are at a point where they are questioning themselves because of the outcome of their kids right now. There are people right now that are dealing with stuff, don't know how they're gonna make ends meet, and don't know whether or not they're gonna be able to afford to do this and afford to do that, and whether to keep the job or not, and don't know how long the job is gonna last. There are people right now that are on the verge. <laughs> there are people that are smiling on the outside, but a crime on the inside. Right. There are people that are wondering, how am I going to make it now that so and so has passed over? There are kids that don't have mothers right now, kids that don't have fathers. There are people that are wondering why, not so much did God do that, but why did God allow that? People need prayer right now. People need intercession. Maybe, maybe when you look at your own self right now, you are at a point where you begin to question yourself. And the truth is, you need some intercession right now. Amen. Amen. With the stuff that you're dealing with, the stuff that's going on in your own life. And right now, you feel like you're on the verge. Feel like you're on the edge. Hallelujah. And you need some intercession right now. I want you to know that you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. Because there are some people here with hearts of compassion. Well, hallelujah. 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 There are some credible people in here right now. Some people that believe that the Lord is still, is still able. Well, When you look at your own life, I'm not asking about anybody else, but when you look at you, how many of y'all will be honest enough to say that you need some prayer right now? All right, all right. When you look at you and the condition that your life is in, when you look at what you are going through, when you look at what you are dealing with, when you look at what's going on around you, when you even look at the, the condition of your kids, <clears throat> you can honestly say, Pastor Butler, I need prayer right now myself. Pastor, I need prayer because I need 
need some direction. I need to know what to say, how to say. I need to know what to do. I need prayer. I need to, 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 I, I need to, 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 to be able to hold it together right now. Because I need prayer. Thank you. 